Welcome to the Bob Balance HealthCast, episode number 494, Aging of the GI System. Bio Balance Health features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Moffin, Medical Director of Bio Balance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Moffin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the newly released book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of T replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Moffin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Moffin's office is currently accepting new patients. So the GI system, we're talking about that today. Tell me what GI stands for and why we're talking about it. Gastrointestinal. So it's basically the whole system from your mouth to the other end where everything comes out. <laughs> so Is mouth, that also called the alimentary canal? Yeah, yeah alimentary. Alimentary yeah. canal, uh-huh. Yeah, and that's right. And yeah, you're the wordsmith. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> most of my patients call it the gut or the GI system or their stomach. But basically it, is, it has to do with how we take in food, what we do to it, what our body does to it to break it down into something we can use. Because food is just fuel. I mean, I know we use it for fun and we enjoy it, but food really, if we look at it critically, should be used as a fuel and we should t- take in the best fuel for our bodies so that we can easily break it down, make it into its component parts and put it into our body and rebuild tissues and give us so, energy. So when I was younger, I worked in a couple of factories mm-hmm. and they had assembly lines. And we'd bring in all these raw materials, Mm -hmm. and then we'd start to spread them out according to different assembly lines that would Mm -hmm. do different things to the raw materials. Mm -hmm. And the other end of the factory floor, you get a finished product that would come out like a bicycle. Mm -hmm. I I worked at a bicycle manufacturing company. Mm -hmm. And that's the way I understand the GI system. We bring in Mm -hmm. raw materials, Mm -hmm. we put them in our stomach. Put them Mm -hmm. in our mouth, chew them up, add saliva, drop Mm -hmm. them down to the stomach. The saliva begins the process of altering the food that we're chewing Mm -hmm. so that the stomach can add other acids and ingredients Uh to further break that down. And then it ships it off to the intestines, the large intestine. Small intestine first. uh, Small intestine. And and so they work. It's like they have little tiny workers in there taking each little bit and do something to it. You're right. And I never really viewed it that way. But it's true. I mean, and each area of the gut does something different. Right. So, And then they ship it off from one piece. To, like I worked in the section of the bicycle factory, the chrome plating section. All the parts that mm-hmm. got chrome plated, we got them as raw steel. And then we put them through on, on racks and put them through mm-hmm. several different uh, processes, processes, baths mm-hmm. where they would mm-hmm. be coated with things or electrified mm-hmm. and electrolyzed. And, mm-hmm. and then they come out the other end and wash them off and stack them somewhere and then ship them off somewhere else where they put pieces together right. and made bigger pieces and finally made bicycles. I think the biggest, the biggest thing that the GI system needs to do all that uh-huh. is water. Okay. And we don't really think so you have about to stay that. Hydrated. You have to be hydrated and have enough water in your GI system to actually take the food and emulsify it and, yeah. and break it down first right. in the stomach to get use the acid so that you can break down proteins and then it goes to um, your gallbladder breaks down the fats it squirts out some uh, some uh, enzymes that break down the fats and, and then you have the uh, pancreas that all has pancreatin pancreatin that is actually an enzyme that breaks down food the pancreas also makes insulin and, sensit- and, and senses your body's blood sugar level and what how much you ate. Mm-hmm. Within this process, and it goes down into the small intestine, and then you start absorbing back. It's broken down enough, and you start absorbing different things. You absorb um, amino acids. You absorb lipids. You absorb vitamins. You absorb, I mean, all everything that you need to survive is reabsorbed through the intestines. And what you can't use right. comes out. Good science, it- Toxic but, waste. But I have to say one more thing. Yeah. We're helped by billions of bacteria right. inside our intestines. It is absolutely necessary that we have bacteria that breaks down the food for us. 
we have we live in a symbiotic relationship the good bacteria and the more different kinds that you have the healthier you are the more you can break your food down and the thinner you'll be if you only have a couple types of bacteria usually that causes obesity so sometimes in extreme cases the doctors actually do fecal transplants yeah I have never seen that but yes I've read about it. I've never uh-huh. seen it either but my understanding of what happens is you get somebody with limited gut bacteria mm-hmm. in their biome mm-hmm. and it's not breaking down enough food mm-hmm. and they're really getting sick and the only way they can do something about it is put more varieties of bacteria mm-hmm. directly into the gut mm-hmm. and so they literally do a fecal transplant it's true but you, and and you know that that sounds gross but and and I'm <laughs> not much sure all of I'm not sure gross I'm not sure I'm up for that but yeah. but uh, spouses share bacteria uh-huh. And mothers and so children. So you have a closed loop of yeah. You well yeah. You have a closed loop of bacteria, but you're right where the genitals are, where you're having sex, is your intestinal outlet. So there's a lot of bacteria transfer Trace there. Back and forth. Okay. So uh, but and babies and mothers share bacteria. Mm-hmm. So a lot of the bacteria that we have in our gut, we got originally when mm-hmm. we passed through the birth canal. In our, in our up own on the way mothers. Out. Yeah, we did. We <laughs> picked it up on the way out. Yeah. And they're worried about babies who have C-sections without, um, without going journey. through the birth canal yeah. because it's cleaner. Right. It doesn't have enough bacteria for that baby, supposedly. Now, honestly, they're living in the amniotic bag and they have, they're, they're getting bacteria of some kind through there. And when the bag breaks, even when we, um, break a bag to deliver them from a C-section, they gulp up some of this amniotic fluid, just like they have been in utero. But then there's other bacteria that's immediately there when we open the abdomen uh-huh. of the mother. So, so they, they don't get the bacteria from the connected blood supply? No. They get bacteria from going through the vagina, okay. the bacteria that lives in the vagina. Right. So they're getting their mother's bacteria, Yeah. which is very... We, we never talked about this in residency no. or, or medical school. This wasn't out there. But now we realize how important it is for people not to be uh, on antibiotics all the time, which kills your good gut bi- bacteria, or steroids, which kills your gut bacteria. Well, but my whole life, doctors have said, be sparing in your use of right. antibiotics. That's right. And they're trying to train us. If it's a virus, antibiotics won't help it. It has to be an infection. That's right. It has and, to be bacteria. Yeah. So it's and all so bacteria related. It's all bacteria related. So... So when you get sick, if you have a virus, please don't take antibiotics. That's right. not what you need. It's not going to help you. Because your body runs out of its ability to absorb antibiotics right. and, and, and benefit and, from them. And then your gut bacteria is gone. But I usually tell folks, either for their children or for themselves, uh-huh. to take probiotics when they're taking an antibiotic. So what's a probiotic? A probiotic is um, all the food and all the all the necessary um, pre-bacteria that you need to repopulate the biome in your gut. Okay. So it's kind of like seeds. Yeah, or, or uh, fertilizer. Mm-hmm. Put it in there to enrich it's the field actually so both. things will grow seeds better. Seeds and fertilizer. So yeah. you're putting it into your gut. At the same time, you're killing off some of your bacteria. Okay. So that gives you back what your your antibiotic is killing. So, so Dr. Klatt says in his book, The Anti-Aging Revolution, which we have been reading and studying, mm-hmm. he says that... With aging, there is a decline in the actual form of the intestines. This causes a decline in the absorption of some nutrients, such as fatty acids Mm -hmm. and cholesterol. So your body, of its own volition, begins to reshape and restructure the way your intestines work. Mm -hmm. And that's just part of getting old, and you lose functionality. But when you say that, it's part of the hormones don't work, your immune system decreases, you get leaky gut. Uh, partially because your immune system isn't working or you're eating something that you're allergic to or you've taken too many antibiotics. So so things that shouldn't get through the wall of the gut right. to the rest of your body through the bloodstream is leaking into the bloodstream and it's making you have an autoimmune disease or allergic or damaging the actual wall of the gut, making it flat. So inside the gut, even though your intestines are Feet and feet. I don't know how many feet they are. I didn't Miles, look at that. I, I didn't review that. But each, each inside this tube, the, the cells kind of go like this so that multiplies the surface area mm-hmm. that you can absorb your food through. 
I mean, it's not like you get a tube like this. When you go into somebody's abdomen, it's like if you're taking out the bowel for some reason right. and you have to get it out of the way, you wrap it in a wet towel and you pull the bowel out and you wrap it up and then you can see into the abdomen. But it's like forever. Yeah. You're like, Pulling okay, off. when's this sucker going to be over? How do you push over? it all back in? You push it back in like in small segments again? You yeah. You wad it all up and shove it back in? In general, you try to put it back in at a time. Shake it like an, jello and make it sort of like It's out. not yeah. quite like that. Yeah, okay. You try, to, you try to very carefully. It's a very, it's a, I mean, when you touch the bowel, it's like this very thin tissue. So, so it, you would think that So when you're going to do that damaged. kind of surgery, do you already know pretty much like which section where there's a blockage or a rupture or a malfunction of some kind? Or do you have to pull it all out and look for it? The sur surgeons usually know where the blockage is, if okay. they're going to take that out, yeah. take out part of the of the bowel. But where I took the bowel out was in um, ovarian cancer, uterine cancer. So you had to, what we call, run the bowel. So you're looking at the outside of the bowel, not the inside of the right. bowel. So, right. so you have to look at each part <clears throat> to see if you have any um, um, metastases or to see if there's been any, any damage from your you surgery. And you cut that out, like slice it in half and resection it, or do you just cut out a little piece of it? Or In general, if, it, if there's a metastases on the outside of the bowel, sometimes you're able to get it off without perforating the bowel. Uh -huh. But in general, wow. if there's a lot of of metastases, you're going to have to do uh, an anastomosis, take out a portion of the bowel and then put it back together. But right. it's not end; it's not usually end to end. Uh -huh. You kind of do it a side to end so it doesn't constrict. Yeah. So okay. it's just a different. It, so it doesn't choke down. So it doesn't choke down. Yeah. I guess doctors long ago figured that out. So that's how you're, I was trained. So. <clears throat> The following changes in the GI system occur as aging occurs, mm -hmm. unless you do something about it to prevent it from happening. Mm -hmm. First, decreased ability of the intestinal wall to hold and absorb nutrients makes older people highly sensitive to minor body injuries or insults. Right. So, so like, we need zinc, we need copper, we need, we need all kinds of minerals, we need all kinds of vitamins to survive. They're called essential vitamins, essential minerals. We can't make that stuff in our body. We have to take it out of food. So as we get older, um, because of inflammation and because of low hormones, which causes inflammation, and because of obesity, we basically are unable to absorb that because we, it's damaged the wall of the, of the bowel. So we can't get everything in that we put in, uh, to, that we put in when we were younger. That, that actually fed us. So I find that I have to give more of the vitamins and the enzymes and to people who are older. Right. Because they don't absorb it all. Some probiotics. of it just goes by. Yeah. Pardon me? Probiotics. Yeah, and probiotics as well. Yeah. And so I'll check their levels. And if I gave that to a 30-year-old, their levels would be great. I give it to somebody who's older. And honestly, they, they barely have any. Yeah. So I have to kind of watch that. Mm. B, B12 is one of our vitamins that we absolutely positively have to have for our brain and our, and our actually every function in the body, but brain and muscle mm -hmm. and, um, and neurologic tissue. So when you get older, you stop making um, an enzyme that actually helps you absorb B12. So oftentimes, it could happen at 40, it could happen at so 50, it could happen at 60. So if you give me B12, I may not be able to absorb it. Right. If I give you oral B12, you can't absorb it. That's, right. That was the advent of B12 shots. Okay. Because and that's we why. had to give it a different right. different way because the gut couldn't absorb it. So you could eat all the meat and green leafy vegetables in the world and you're not getting B12 out of it. Mm. And so you come in and you go, somebody told me I had MS because my legs hurt and I'm wobbling and, and I give them a shot of B12 and it's over. I mean, that's, that's the kind of miraculous <laughs> um, recovery you can have from something like that. Not everybody. So, of is there a with specific MS. age at which this happens, or does it depend on each individual's metabolism as they age? Each individual's metabolism, and I think I stopped absorbing B12 when I was forty. It was early, and so did my dad. And that also goes along with early gray hair. Uh -huh. And my dad had that too, and so did I. Okay. So, I mean, it's it's an interesting link, but but B12, we have to give B12 just. Oftentimes, nursing homes just give it to everybody. Just give them shots. Yeah. Wow. So the second uh, of these adjustments that Dr. Platts talks about 
is that drugs, uh, old people are generally given lots of drugs. If they have access to medical care, mm -hmm. doctors give them stuff because they need it. Mm -hmm. So drugs appreciably affect their taste sensation and thereby their appetite. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed, and this is anecdotal, it's not medical, mm -hmm. but in talking to a lot of older people as they age, what they tell me is they get to where they can only taste sweets. Right. And so they tend to only eat sweets or I they know. drink something like Boost or Ensure yeah. because they don't want to eat. They're not hungry mm -hmm. and they resist being challenged to eat more food. Mm -hmm. So I remember my, my wife's grandmother, the last two weeks before she died, didn't eat anything but red velvet cake and uh, donuts. But at, at that I mean, point, that we if you're 90 it, something yeah. and you're yeah. eating she, red velvet cake, yeah. you know it's, it has your you know life has to end at some point. Yeah. And if you can't taste, yeah. then there there are a lot <laughs> of lose, other things. You lose the taste for life. Yes, yes, you do. <laughs> yeah. And so, and there's a lot of other things that have happened. But that's true. I mean, medications are uh, have a lot more side effects in people who are older, and or they're not absorbed at all because. I mean, I the medicines, medicines. So, wow. so something like thyroid. Thyroid's like kind of fragile. It has to be absorbed by your stomach and broken down by your stomach. It has to be absorbed in certain parts of your intestine, and in some parts, it requires energy to push it through the intestine. So you I can't mean, get a thyroid shot. No, like a B twelve shot. No. I mean, I guess I guess that's possible, but they don't. They have them done. Yeah. No. And so, so anyway, so that's that's one of the problems that yeah. we have with trying to give thyroid or something like that to somebody with a short gut, like they've mm -hmm. had uh, surgery on their intestines for right. obesity. Right. I have to give them sublingual under the tongue vitamins and minerals because they can't absorb it through their gut. Mm -hmm. They took that part out. So again, it's like. As pieces break, other pieces break. Right. So it's, if you can prevent the original break, right. you're better off. That's right. Okay. Uh, the third thing he identifies is malabsorption can be caused by low levels of gastric acids. That's in, in your stomach, stomach or in your intestines? Stomach. Gastric stomach. is stomach. Possibly compounded by gastric hypochlorhydria. That's just low acid. Low acid. Okay. So, small so bowel bacterial overgrowth. So a lot of people who take um, um, antacids, <clears throat> excuse me, chronically, or uh, omeprazole, mm -hmm. um, chronically, it was meant to be a short-term thing, but some people take them forever. They lower the acid in their stomach so much that they can't absorb their drugs. They can't absorb. They can't absorb B12 because it needs acid. They they literally can't absorb many of their vitamins and minerals orally because they don't have enough acid and they're causing that problem because of eating spicy foods or you know usually so I'm of the belief if if you eat spicy foods and it hurts your stomach you stop eating spicy foods right I mean you don't just keep eating spicy foods so and take adapt, it, and, yeah I'm going to take an omeprazole because I'm eating spicy foods so um, it protects us but if we overuse that medication we have low uh, we have low acid in our stomach, and then it can't kill off the bacteria that's there. So then we get bad breath, and that's what they're talking about. Right. Basically, the overgrowth of bacteria. Okay. The fourth one lowered, and you have to help me with this one because mm -hmm. I, I don't see it, literally. Lowered <laughs> gastrointestinal movement, including incontinence, may occur. So okay. What are they saying? What they, they that, that could have been said differently. Yeah. I mean, that's not our writing, that's theirs. Yeah. So... Um, <clears throat> Some bowel, some, what they should have said is some bowel stops being able to peristalse. And if you look at the bowel when someone's open, you see it, you know, it's big here and then it here. And then, I mean, it just squeezes your food or your what's left of your food down down the line. So and that's called peri peristalsis. Peristalsis. So if you, um, if you have low thyroid, you get constipated because you don't have peristalsis. It's like a snake. It just contracts in sequence right. and pushes it along. Right. Okay. It's and all without us knowing it's happening right. or feeling it. Hopefully. So we know it when yeah. it's not happening. Right. Yeah. That's right. So but you need your hormones actually thyroid hormone mm -hmm. for that. So um, so as you get older, thyroid hormone goes down and that can stop the peristalsis, but also just inflammation and the other things we were talking about that can attack the bowel, causes the bowel not to function in peristalsis. On the other hand, when they talk about incontinence of stool, 
they're talking about your the sphincters don't work anymore. Okay. So that's a lack of which is um, another contraction issue. Right. So sphincters okay. are held closed normally to hold something back like urine or, or stool. Right. And then in okay. general, they're not going to, lo- uh, except under certain unusual circumstances, they're not going to lose it's like, stool. It's like or, a stopper in a sink. Right. You pull it out and the water flows out. Right. You put it in, the water doesn't flow right. out. And, or it, but it's it automatic. mostly does it this way. Yeah. So basically that's something when the neurologic function decreases or if you're low on B12. I mean, that could cause it. Yeah. But you, you start losing stool. But it's stool. chronically an aging process. Yes. All right. It is. But the aging means you didn't have this. You didn't. This is aging. This stopped. And then everything else happened. And, and the last one is the uh, GI changers in mucosal immune response also occur. So yeah. mucus is... Mucus is lines all of the intestine and kind of protects it. All right. So it's kind of a slime, like a slimy snail. Uh-huh. So a snail has slime all over it. Your mu- your bowel has mucus all over on the inside of it. That's why you wrap it in a towel to try to pull it out. Otherwise, you just slip along your hand. And you don't want to harm it. You don't want to puncture it. Yeah, tear it. So it's a wet towel. So yeah. you just kind of like okay. slowly. Yeah, slowly pull it out. So it's, um, in this case, it you, lo- you lose the slime. Uh-huh. And so so it's like having, having a cut without a Band-Aid over it. So all of these things that are going through your... Intestines are some of them are caustic, some of them have pHs that are high or low, and they can damage the the wall of the intestine if there's no mucus over it. Okay. So to protect that's it. right. Yeah. And so that's one of the things that happens with age. So we got much deeper in the gastrointestinal yeah, we tract did. than we expected. We to did go. actually. But I, for me, it's been a really interesting conversation. I feel like <laughs> I've learned a lot. Hopefully, you did too. And next week, you will come back. Uh, and, and we'll talk about the aging pyramid as it is understood and operated at Biobalance Health. Thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.